for decades. On the basis of concerns from the American Heart Association and consumer groups, the Federal Trade Commission carried out successful legal action upheld by the Supreme Court to compel the egg industry to cease and desist from false and misleading advertising that eggs had no harmful effects on health. See, anti-cholesterol attacks on eggs resulted in severe economic loss through a reduction in egg consumption, so the egg industry created a National Commission on Egg Nutrition to combat the anti-cholesterol, anti-egg publicity with ads like this, exclaiming there is no scientific evidence whatsoever that eating eggs in any way increases the risk of heart attack, which the U.S. Court of Appeals found patently false and misleading. Even the tobacco industry wasn't that brazen, instead just trying to introduce the element of doubt, arguing that the relationship between smoking and health remained an open question. The egg ads made seven claims, each of which, in truth and in fact, was determined to be bull the court determined the egg industry ads were, and are, false, misleading, deceptive. In fact, legal scholars view what the tobacco industry tried to do as the same as what the American Egg Board's Nutrition Commission on Egg Nutrition tried to do. As with the egg ads, the tobacco industry did more than just espouse one side of a genuine controversy, but just denied the existence of scientific evidence. Over the last 36 years, the American Egg Board has spent hundreds of millions of dollars to convince people eggs are not going to kill them, and it's working. In combination with aggressive nutritional science and public relations efforts, research shows that the advertising has been effective in decreasing consumers' concerns over eggs and cholesterol heart health. This is uh, from their internal strategy documents I got a hold of. Currently, they're targeting moms. Their approach is to surround moms wherever they are. They pay integration fees for egg product placement in TV shows. To integrate eggs into The Biggest Loser, for example, could be a million dollars. But getting some kids' storytime reading program to integrate eggs may only take half a million, though. The American Egg Board keeps track of who is and is not a friend of eggs. They pay scientists $1,500 to sit and answer questions like, what studies can help disassociate eggs from cardiovascular disease? From the beginning, their arch nemesis was the American Heart Association, over which they fought a major battle over cholesterol. In documents received, uh, retrieved through the Freedom of Information Act, we see even the USDA repeatedly chastising the egg industry for misrepresenting the American Heart Association position. In a draft letter to magazine editors, the egg industry tried to say that the American Heart Association changed its recommendations to approve an egg a day in 2000, and eventually eliminated its number of restrictions on eggs in 2002, to which the head of USDA's poultry research and promotion programs had to explain the quote-unquote change in 2000 wasn't a change at all. Nothing in the guidelines or recommendations was changed. What happened is that in response to a question posed by someone planted in the audience, Heart Association reps acknowledged that even though eggs are the most concentrated source of cholesterol in the diet, since an individual egg has less than 300 mg of cholesterol, technically an egg could fit under the 300 mg daily limit. And in 2002, they just eliminated the specific mention of eggs for consistency's sake. But the American Heart Association insists that they haven't changed their position and continue to warn consumers about eggs. Here's from the AHA website at the time. You know, if one egg has 213, and the limit of dietary cholesterol intake for people with normal cholesterol is 300, you could fit in an egg if you cut down on all other animal products. Right? You can have an egg for breakfast, and then uh, if you had some coffee, some skinless turkey breast, etc., you could end up 510. Right, nearly twice the recommended limit. So if you're going to eat an egg, you need to substitute vegetables for some of the meat, you drink your coffee black, and you know, watch for hidden eggs in baked goods. And the limit for folks with high cholesterol is 200 mg a day, which may not even allow a single egg a day. 
This is how the Senior Director of Nutrition Education at the American Egg Board's Egg Nutrition Center characterized the American Heart Association guidelines. Maybe I'm being uh, overly sensitive, but this reads like if you insist on having those deadly high cholesterol eggs, your penalty will be to eat vegetables. And you can't even have that yummy steak and creamy coffee you love. Really, it's not worth eating eggs. Oh, and if you think you'll be able to enjoy some delicious baked goods, forget it, the deadly eggs are there too.